Everybody, welcome back to New Market. I'm Yumble, and this is a bit of a special episode. This is a an extended look at me experimenting with, with techniques and how to get these buildings in. If you were here for the last two episodes, episode zero, I started, yes, I started with zero, was essentially setting up the map and preparing the highway to build off of, you know, to have interchanges prepared. Episode one was setting up Main Street and getting the, the networks within the town of Newmarket established. Now we have the task of of figuring out where the buildings are going to go. We do have a couple landmarks already set up. Some of them will stay, some of them will change. I ask that you stay flexible with this because I do tend to, to change my mind a lot. But if you're interested in the process, it's all here. This is This is the entire figuring out process. Like right now I'm trying to figure out how to integrate this Dunkin' Donuts. And I see that there's the main, there's a main street, and then there's kind of a budding commercial area there. That's a gas station on the end, just to just to be clear. And I'm like, okay, let's put the let's put the Dunkin' Donuts behind the gas station. That makes sense. I also want to try to respect the the drive-throughs of these different places. Later in this episode, there's a Walgreens where I try to install the the drive-through in a decent format. And I think I've developed an even better way to pull this off. So stay tuned in the series and you'll see these, these evolutions as they occur. But there, there are uh, a lot of parking spaces in U.S. cities because we have a lot of cars. And I want to do it without overdoing it. And part of that is using that, that parking lot that I'm using, that pavement style parking lot. Instead of using parking lot roads or big parking lots, both of which are good, you can find these in the Steam Workshop if you want. I have a whole video about parking solutions in City Skylines, and it focuses primarily on big parking lots and parking lot roads, because those were that was the paradigm at the time. But I've taken a step back and realized I can just use these little modular parking spaces, and they use pavement. It looks like concrete instead of instead of tar, which is a bit questionable but also kind of nice. It's a better parking lot system. It doesn't take up as much space. It's a little more flexible for me rather than having to make an entire spaced out parking lot road area. I can kind of tuck away the parking spaces. Uh, this is me just experimenting with this, this commercial area, adding the Walgreens, moving it around. There's a fire station there on the corner too. And this poor fire station gets moved like for, I don't want to spoil it, but it gets moved <laughs> a bunch of times because I find that this corner is a major corner and I want to respect that. It's a major route coming through town and I want there to be good stuff on this on this corner. Uh, so this is a post office. I have these awesome mail car assets, these awesome US Postal Service assets that, that are gonna be featured in this city because I think mail is very realistic. I think that having a Dunkin' Donuts, at least one is very realistic. Probably multiple. Probably by the end of this part of town, there's probably going to be three or four, because that's that's New England. That's how it is. I, upon reading comments, I realize I haven't explained properly. I didn't know I'd have to really. I, I, I didn't consider this, but New England is a place in the United States. It's not a, it's not an iteration of England. I'm not building a new part of England. I'm building based on a region in the US. And it's it happens to be the region that I grew up in. The The region is called New England, and it includes, let's see if I can remember all, there's six of them. Uh, the entire Northeast part of the country is New England. So that's, that is Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut. That, that should be all of them, but that's the entire Northeast part. Uh, shares a border with Canada for a lot of it, and it's it's a good area. It's fairly cold, and it's got its own issues. It's got its own problems and quirks, but it's known for very nice buildings and very nice autumns, and very rural drives. A lot of a lot of maple trees, so that's why you you see this nice autumn where the trees turn a nice amber or a nice red. And that attracts a lot of attention. A lot of people know New England for the leaves. But it's known for its small towns, often colonial in nature. So we're talking, these, these places are probably from 
as late, excuse me, as early as the 1600s in year, but generally I would say they were established in the 1700s largely. And brick was a very common building material, so I try to lean on brick as much as possible, because that's a very New England type thing. Our college campuses are often made of brick, our Main Street buildings. B brick was, was plentiful, or, you know, easy enough to work with, etc. So a lot of the buildings are brick. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. I, I start doing Main Street. Check this out. This is the... This is the moment that I've been waiting for, and there's going to be several iterations of this before I get it exactly right. But here's a glimpse into the process. This is me looking at assets, taking assets from from the Rico area of, of Find It, as well as from Plop... So I'm using Ploppables and Growables. I don't know if I've ever explained it explicitly. I have a video about realism in City Skylines that goes into it a bit. But a growable is a building that grows when zoned. So when you zone in residential and the houses start coming in, that's where that's that's the a growable. They're growing in. A ploppable is a building that you place manually. So like a police station, all of the police stations in city skylines, no matter where you zone, you will never grow a police station. You have to place it by hand manually. And you'll notice I'm placing all these buildings by hand. Though some of them, to add to the confusion, some of them are in fact growables. Some of them are zonable buildings, but I'm choosing to place all of them by hand. And I've had some people say like, how can you do that? Like, why would you waste the time uh, plopping everything? And the truth is the result is just so much better for what I'm doing, like hand placed assets and hand picked, hand -picked building facades and, and the sizes of the buildings and the materials and the way they look next to each other. You don't get any of that with with uh, zoned in buildings. You just don't get that that level of detail that I need for this area. This is going to be a focal point of the entire thing. So all of these colonial towns or these old towns will have a main street and it's their main commercial district. Downtown, main street, they all kind of mean the same thing. And they're not always wall to wall, but I'm looking forward to doing a bit of wall to wall here. Some some nice old U.S. classic wall to wall buildings. And some of these buildings are hits. Some of them are misses. You'll see the iterations as they go. You'll see some of the buildings keep popping up and I keep trying to work them in in different ways with mixed amounts of success. But I think that's my my process. If you're interested in this series, I hope you're interested in the process. Because the process is we, we establish a mood, we establish an area and a goal, and I've tracked down assets from the Steam Workshop. The collection is ever-evolving and it's incomplete right now, but the collection is, is in the description of this video. I'm going to put a, a link to the Steam Workshop collection in every video. And it'll change as, as my building style changes or as the, the asset list grows, it's going to evolve. But mainly it's me doing this, saying, okay, what do I have? Where will it fit? What does it look like? What, what are the materials? And this is not an idealized image of New England either. This is not going to be the picturesque. It, okay, it'll be picturesque in a sense. But picturesque doesn't mean perfect. So, case in point, I like that at the end of the street, if you saw the last episode, there's a, a little featured shot of the church being across the street from a motel. It's not a particularly nice motel, but it's a realistic motel and there's a church across the street from it and that is New England that juxtaposition right there of we have automobiles and we have to support automobiles and this was probably a when the motel went in it was probably a big deal like yes we're gonna get some tourism and it's gonna be beautiful and that's probably true but it's also a motel which is they're not known for being that nice it's a motor hotel across from a church so that kind of idea where you can have a a classic, a, a building that was established in the in the 1700s, next to a gas station, a, a Dunkin' Donuts beside a courthouse. That type of that type of scenario is not unrealistic here. So it's not going to be an idealized. It's not my my perfect interpretation of New England. It's going to be my my realistic but nice interpretation of New England. So that is Oddfellows Hall. Oddfellows is one of those, it's just a group, it's just a guild in the U.S. It's kind of a, a 
how would I describe it? It's not a union exactly. Oddfellows is this, I assume it's a US thing because I haven't heard of it elsewhere, but it's just a kind of a worker's place, kind of a worker's club, we'll call it. And I want that Oddfellows Hall on the right side of the screen right now to be the tallest building on Main Street, I think, other than churches, other than the church and the courthouse. I think that'll be the tallest, the tallest uh, building of, of in the row, at least. I don't want it to be overly tall. This is not going to be New York. This is not going to be Boston. It's not going to be a tall part of town, but it is going to be an interesting and diverse part of town while still being cohesive in that funny New England way. Uh, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the Main Street as it comes together, and I'll, I'll pop back in once there's once there's something substantial to talk about. But, you know, just enjoy the ride. This is the moment where I, I identify that we're going to have an alley behind the main buildings. So Main Street is going to have these wall-to-wall -wall buildings and ways to get back to this alley. And the alley is going to be good for kind of some minimal parking, just enough parking for like a manager and a few employees at these, at these shops, or maybe a bit of residential if some of these Main Street buildings end up being housing as well, which is pretty pretty high chance of housing happening on Main Street. It's going to be a very mixed-use place. But I'd also like to have deliveries behind the buildings, which is where building spawn points is going to come in very, very handy. If you've seen my previous video or if you've been looking at the City Skylines modding scene recently, building spawn points lets you take the, the place that trucks would normally make deliveries and it lets you put them wherever you want relative to the building. So I could take the spawn point or also the trash, the trash pickup, the ambulance, you can do it for any of the services but I might take that for each of these buildings and turn it around towards the alley so that the dump trucks are using the alleyway rather than the main road. The main road is going to feature 60 degree parking as a lot of places do like this. It's a two lane road and I'm going to end up putting 60 degree parking on that road by the end of this episode. But I'd like to have little parking areas as well as little pick up and drop off areas for, for goods for these businesses a couple parking spots, probably some trash areas as well. I'd really love for the, as I said before, I'd love for the dump trucks to come behind the buildings rather than in front of. And here's another road that's meant to serve a similar purpose. A lot of what you're seeing is in exper experimentation and it's on the fly and um, a lot of figuring out. And in this episode, you're not actually going to see the, the parking, the way that parking is going to work doesn't come to fruition just yet and some of this ends up changing but as I said before it's all part of the process it's all how I'm how I'm learning to to put this area together I don't know what I what I've got I can't solve the puzzle until all the pieces are face up in front of me you know a puzzle like a real puzzle you take all the pieces put them on the table put them face up organize them around find the edge pieces that's really what I'm doing I'm saying okay what's the character of this place what are what buildings do I already have that way I can see what's missing and also start establishing a road network and decide if I, if I like it. So right now I'm going across the street and establishing, like poking out a wall to wall area and just seeing what, what sort of works. This will be changed around eventually, but, but that's okay. All good stuff.
Here's a pretty gratifying moment for anyone who chooses to build this way. I finally unpause the game and I get to see the, the activity. I get to see the types of cars that I've selected for the map. I get to see some deliveries being made, some, some functionality and some life being injected into the city that's been static this whole time. And I love to see it. That's that's part of the goal. That's part of why I like building in city skylines is the traffic system and and building for functionality. And this is not functional yet. It will be. But it, yeah, not yet. It will be. It will be. It's just managing the amount of of residential versus commercial. The main street is going to be overwhelmed by commercial. Not overwhelmed. That's the wrong word. But it's going to be primarily commercial as a main street should be. Maybe there's apartments above these buildings. I don't know if I'm going to factor that in too much, but some of them will be apartment buildings and some of them will be 
commercial buildings and it'll be all mixed use. But it's just striking that balance where there's enough people to work at these buildings and shop at these buildings to sustain them. And the nature of the way that I'm building, because we're plopping the buildings in, it can be very disproportionate if you don't look out. So this is me realizing that and establishing some, some residential to try to balance it. But yeah, I love seeing the city run. I love seeing people walking around. As things grow, we'll get to see that more. We'll get to see Main Street and we'll, we'll get to know if there's a traffic light. Wouldn't that be exciting? Those of you from small town anywhere, small town, primarily small town US is my experience, but small town anywhere, are you from a place that's small enough to not have a traffic light? I'll raise my hand. I grew up, there was no traffic light in my city. There was also no roundabout growing up. So this was all primary, there, there were a few yields. There were a few spots where you had to yield, but mainly it's stop signs. So you pull up to the stop sign, you look both ways, you, you drive into traffic and there's not that much of it. So that's that's the only way that this works. But yeah, no traffic light in my town, only stop signs, no, no lights whatsoever. Which is very simple. For a small town, that's sustainable. That's easy living. <laughs> when when the it's so easy, the police don't have to direct traffic at intersections when the power goes out, that type of thing. Uh, where I live now, that's unimaginable. That's unfeasible. Another big deal in New England is snow removal. That's something that I'm not really going to build in this city. I don't think we will see. I've been asked about it, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet. But snow removal, we have, we have some really great snow, snow removal systems, and the kids don't typically miss that much school. Though we get lots of snowfall in New England. It's very, very cold, and there's quite a bit of precipitation, uh, precip uh, uh, precipitation there. There's lots of precipitation, snow in the cold. The kids don't miss much school. The, the snow removal teams and the, the sand, the, for those of you from places where you don't need this, the way that it typically works is the roads are salted the night before. Some, some sort of, uh, not table salt, but some sort of other salt is put on the roads in preparation, and that salt melts the initial round of snow and deters ice from forming until plow trucks can show up. And the plow trucks will also put a mixture of sand and salt on the road. The sand is for, what's the term, friction. The sand is to add some, some grip so your tires can grip the road. The salt is to melt the snow, melt the ice, melt my frozen heart. And then the plow trucks are there to push it all off to the side, hopefully, in time. It's all just to buy the plow trucks time though so that the plow trucks can move all the snow to different areas. But it's a very efficient system. It works out uh, pretty much fine, usually. It's so just a quick update on what's going on here. There's still a few buildings from my my palette that I haven't used yet. We've got, uh, I think this is, I'm gonna use it as a town hall. Technically it's a courthouse, but really it can be whatever we want. That is a university. I'd like to start a university in the city. I just gotta figure out where to put it so it looks nice. I've got a couple elementary schools couple Dunkin Donuts left. I, I don't know that they're gonna go near the middle because we already have a good one there. And a Walgreens that that fits as well. Uh, the wall, We already have a Walgreens too. But what's going on here, do I seem worried? I'm not worried, it's fine. It's gonna, it's gonna work out. I've overzoned commercial because the majority of my Main Street buildings are commercial. So by nature, the, the majority of the buildings that I have that are wall-to-wall, -wall, that look really plausible as a wall-to-wall -wall Main, Main Street type thing, are understaffed because they're all, almost all commercial. Some of them, uh, the few exceptions are the ones that survived. Nope, that's a commercial. So we're, we're understaffed, but as we go, I can, I can always reset these. And the deal with Ploppable Rico that I've been using, where I can place a building that, that has a commercial status or a residential status, those can be reset. So anytime that I feel we have enough residential presence, like maybe by the time this hits 300, I can probably go around and pick a few places and go, okay, let's reset these three places. This is, uh, this is cheating, but but what's cheating when you're painting a city, right? I'm, I'm trying to uh, much less play the game and more create a city that functions. And money is no object. I haven't pointed this out, but I'm playing with infinite money. 
I'm using a lot of mods. This is all just part of that. This is all just a, a symptom of that. And overgrowing the commercial was kind of essential to get Main Street in a good place. It, it's going to turn out balanced eventually. I've got the residential coming in back here. But, uh, you know, give it some time. Appreciate your patience. I absolutely adore this type of thing. We've got a the courthouse across the park. So this is the this is the college, just for context. This is our university building. The main building. I want to have other buildings around it. It may be a university area, or maybe not. It's that's less important. But mainly I want it to look cohesive. But we've got the courthouse from the intro across the park from this. So we've got a nice building separated by the park into this and here it's me kind of figuring out the a path network around this so that so that the sims have access to all of the doors but i just love this sort of thing like like adding the paths in uh seeing how the paths can connect to the road in different ways there's the shot the courthouse to the gazebo to the college and no doubt there's gonna be a crosswalk there i'm not sure if the crosswalk is added here in this episode but there there is a crosswalk that appears which doesn't seem like much. It's not that big a deal, but like, I just, I'm a sucker for that type of planning where the people said, you know what? We want a nice green, maybe it's, maybe it was a market area at one point, or maybe it was whatever. Maybe, maybe it was for livestock grazing. It doesn't matter. But the green space remains where the gazebo is on the right. And that's still across from the college campus, which is probably an old college.
This is the moment where I turn on realistic parking in Traffic Manager, and that is something of a of a tricky setting to turn on. Because realistic parking will actually tax your CPU a bit harder and will affect things a little... It makes things a bit funky at times, but I think I'll be able to do it very effectively in this city, and realistically too. Uh, this area is not going to be overpopulated. It's not going to be overstated or overdone. I think that we'll be able to supply it with plenty of parking, and I don't think it's going to be that tough on traffic. The reality with, with realistic parking is that cars just drive around until they find a parking spot. So if you if you turn that on, not only does it add a whole bunch of calculations to your CPU, but it also will put load on your city because those cars will go around the block three or four times. Those cars will add to the traffic of, of other vehicles just coming into your city. So that's me turning on realistic parking because I want to see how this functions as I build it. And it's me figuring out how the... What's this called? The... Uh, parking lot roads pack 60 degree spaces how they fit onto this network the network is called suburban suburban 60 degree parking road or something therein and it's by urbanist urbanist has a bunch of really cool networks i don't know if they've released anything too recently but this is one of one of their awesome networks they have a bunch of very popular networks they have one that's called something Main Street, I think, and it has uh, parking on the sides, and it's a very U.S. Main Street. But this road, suburban, suburban road with 60 degree parking, reminds me very strongly of where I'm from because this is exactly how we did it. There were 60 degree parking spaces all along the main road, and there were kind of municipal parking areas. There were just general, in the middle of town parking areas, but I don't think we're going to be hurting on parking. If I follow my heart and just do this, I think we'll have ample parking without overdoing it. But we really want this commercial district to be supplied, especially if we're turning it on in traffic manager. It has to work out. This is good. I love I love that little moment there, making the crossing with no roads connected to it. Look at that. And I like that the network actually has a a pavement area that juts out from the side of the road to give a little pedestrian priority. That's not particularly realistic in my experience, at least not in the U.S. We don't really do, not in my area, we don't really have pavement areas jutting out into the, into the road to help people cross. But I think it's a cool way to break up the parking in this area and helps me copy everything over and <laughs> I just think it looks good.
quick and dirty crosswalk tutorial 101. Use node controller. Flatten it out. Top right button flattens out the angles. Intersection marking tool. Click the click the node. Hold shift to make crosswalks. You can change them however you want. But that is it. That is the quick and dirty intersection tutorial. You're welcome. That is going to do it for today. Thank you for watching uh, this the well episode two of this build. I'm very excited for episode three. Uh, I've got a, the, the city has a lot of potential uh, yet, and I still haven't shown you all of the the tricks that I have up my sleeve. Really appreciate you watching. Feel free to check out the Discord if you want some community action and you want some uh, a, a place to ask questions and have some fun. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitch. I stream twice a week these days. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comments and of course feel free to subscribe here everyone i've been yumble i'll see you in the next stream or the next video